Good guys, Mac with the Air Circle. Today, a little solo scrub down. And let's just get straight into it. So, first things first. Some new releases that are coming up for the Horus Heresy, which is great to see. We have some Blood Angels. We've got two different types of Praetor. As with uh, a couple of other legions coming up, they've decided to make a Terminator and, of course, a Power Armored console. Now, up to you how you run them, of course. If it's anything like the Thousand Suns ones, they'd be pretty damn monopose. Um, you will have to probably chop and change things, um, soft convert if you want to rearm them. But otherwise, they look great. They look fantastic. So I can't really fault it. It's great to see more models for the Horus Heresy coming out. I do have some misgivings though, which I'll go over in a minute, um, relating to the Horus Heresy. Here we have the Blood Angels Contemptor, and as I say every time I do an Entering 30k episode, always need a Contemptor. A Contemptor is worth it in every army you make. Failing that, a Dreadnought of some kind. Now, the Blood Angels Contemptor looks great. Yep, nothing more to say on it, just looks great. Uh, reminds me a lot of the, of course, Emperor's Children Contemptor, the Third Legion, because... Well, they're both very fancy schmancy sort of legions. They have very nice looking stuff, lots of gold trim, and of course the Blood Angels wear it better than the uh, Emperor's Children, some might say. <laughs> but yeah, it looks nice. Uh, as always, I just want to point out to people, we always see pictures of Contemptors with, you know, one gun arm, one fist. In my experience, either all combat or all shooting, don't try and make your contemptors to do both jobs because they never seem to do both jobs well. So just just a minor little point, people to take into consideration if they're playing Horus Heresy. If you want to contempt a dreadnought, either make it all about the shooting or all about the combat. Don't half-ass it and go for something in between. All right, here is my contentious issue, the one that's going to piss people off, and I don't like this model. Not because it's an ugly model, poorly constructed, anything like that. No, this is a beautiful looking model. Um, the nipple assault cannons, perfectly relevant to the Blood Angels. It's great to see, in fact, more Blood Angels stuff because they have been noticeably absent at this point in the Heresy, much like the White Scars and, of course, the Dark Angels. My problem comes from the fact, however, that precious resources are being devoted to, well, this. One Dreadnought, not an essential unit in every army by far, one Dreadnought for one Legion, out of 18 Legions, out of Black Shields, out of Shattered Legions, out of the Adeptus Custodes, the Sisters of Silence, the Imperial Militia and Cults, um, out of the Solar Auxilia, the, the three different flavors of Mechanicum, Tagmata, uh, Reducta, Cybernetica, all of these different factions in the Heresy, the Knights Errant, the Officio Assassinarium, which hasn't made an entrance yet in the game. And we're building Contemptors and Leviathans for one different Legion. Why are we building a Leviathan for the Blood Angels? That is a waste of resource, in my opinion. Now, am I against making these sort of units? No, I'm not. Uh, the Thousand Suns have the Assyrian Dreadnought, but that is its own unique unit. This is literally just a Leviathan Dreadnought. The thing that annoys me about it is that we don't have attack bikes in the Heresy. We don't have numerous different types of consoles, which is slowly being rectified. But basic units that have been there since Book 1, seven years ago, that we still don't have. The Mechanicum are missing Arl attacks, the sort of Castellax that fly unit, or Domitar that fly, or have jump packs. The Imperial Militia and Cults have just been given nothing, no units at all. Just a, oh yeah, make it up with Gangs Workshop minis and whatever Forge World has kept in production. The Soul Resilia are losing units actively from production. So many decals have gone out of commission. And yet, when a unit finally does get made for Heresy, they make a niche unit like this. I don't get it. Am I just being foolish here and thinking that it's stupid, utterly stupid, to put resources into this? To make moulds for this, when things like basic units, like rapiers, for example, 
for the Solar Auxilia have to go out of production. A unit that most Solar Auxilia armies would have used go out of production so that Blood Angels players who do want to use a Leviathan have one. That's great. That is stupid. Units like this, this Leviathan, which, again, I have nothing against the sculpt. I think it's great, and it's great they're putting this effort into this faction, but this is the sort of thing that comes after you fulfill the basic requirements. Land Raiders with Explorator Augury webs. Do we have those yet? No, we do not. Do we have attack bikes in the Heresy? No, we do not. We're only just getting land speeders for 30k. So, all these different things that are out there that have rules and no models... And yet, all of a sudden, a model that already exists is getting a facelift for one faction. I just find that fucking stupid. So, it doesn't piss me off. I just find it fucking stupid. Alright. Speaking of consoles, there is the Pravian console. Who is now coming in a Mark V flavour, which is interesting to see. Do want to point out his bionic leg uh, actually appears to be Mark III. So this is the Mark V, which is sort of a blend of different armor types, which is cool to see. But I think we can all agree when you look at this, this looks less 30k and a lot more 40k in styling. And as people know, I'm not the biggest fan of 40k's aesthetics at the moment. So I think it's just the backpack, really. The backpack looks a bit derpy. He almost looks like he might be a plastic miniature, not a resin one, actually, which is interesting. Why do I say that? Uh, it just appears to have finer lines on a few points than uh, I seem to see in resin, especially when it comes to the left greave. That's The rivets are very, very small on that, and the trim is very small. I don't know. It probably is resin. It's just in my head that it might be plastic. Um... I think the backpack is it. If you change the backpack out for something, maybe just a Mark IV, VI, or three communications backpack from the upgrade kits that were probably out of production anyway now, I forget. It would look better than um, what he's got. What he's got looks a bit ridiculous. But that's just nitpicking, honestly. It's, it's fine. It's a fine model. Um, what else? Alright, so the Vigilator. Vigilator is a long time coming. Interesting thing is, though, most people who run them, run them in power armor. Um, or scout armor, sorry. And, of course, this model is in power armor. So, really, when it comes to Vigilator, there should be a scout armor option and a power armor option. Because the power armor option can't infiltrate, which is, of course, a big deal. Now, that said, if you're Raven Guard or Alpha Legion, you can put him in Artificer Armor and still infiltrate, because that's part of your Legion tactics. And that's great for those two factions, and they're, of course, two factions that definitely get a lot of use out of this model. That said, where's the Scout? Where's the Scout Armor? Um, the Ultramarine Sergeant from 40k, I forget his name. Um, Sergeant Talion, something like that. The Scout Sergeant's probably the closest thing to this that's in scout armor, so maybe you could use him as a recon armored vigilator for 30k, I don't know, just spitballing ideas. Again, strange things, strange backpack. I don't know why they've got these things going on with backpacks at the moment, um, also I don't like the head. He would probably look a lot better with a helmeted option, but again, this is just nitpicking, just saying what I do and don't like. So if I were to buy this model, I would probably put a helmet on him, for example. Other people, maybe they like the bare head with the 60 monoculars built into one side of it. Probably gives him a neck ache. Poor bastard. Alright, what else have we got? More Titanicus stuff. Warhounds, of course, and Realm of Battle Tiles. Necromunda, House Cordor. They look great, House Cordor. Um, they kind of remind me of Bretonian peasants, <laughs> as much as... Uh, people from the underhives but hey they look great this rogue trader game of course is coming out which um geez you talk about grim derp the nurgle plague faction whatever you want to call it pox faction they are very grim derp i don't look at those and go oh geez this is a terrifying god of decay and pestilence i look at this and go oh that's weird 
Um, <laughs> it's like they're trying to have some sort of like playful circus theme going on or something. Um, like clowns at the circus, jugglers, uh, court jesters meets Nurgle, and I just don't like that approach to Nurgle, I'm sorry. Again, if you do, perfectly fine. This show is not about telling people what they should and shouldn't like. It's about saying what I like and why I like it. So, yeah, you Nurgle's dumb. All right. Kill teams. Eh. Not interesting kill teams. And this is interesting. More of the uh, endless magical spells of Age of Sigma coming out. And they've got this bull here, which looks very much like a Hashut bull. Um, for those who play Chaos Dwarves, of course, that immediately springs to mind. But looking at it, and looking at all the other endless spells that have flame effects, I have to ask, has Games Workshop forgotten how to model fire? That does not look like fire. That's spiky shit. All over the bull. And then it occurred to me. They're making things in CAD. Of course they don't know how to make fire. They're trying to draw in straight lines in the computer instead of with their hands, with something tangible they're holding as they sculpt. It is so much harder to create good fire effects in a computer when you're drawing it with lines. I totally don't know why it skipped my brain, but there was the result. And I was looking at it, I was like, something looks off about this. It looks like the... Th bull is jumping out of a bush made out of thorns and that's when it occurred to me I'm like hang on a minute this is happening all throughout different models in their range whenever they're sculpting on like fire and energy effects now it's this sort of thorny bullshit here look at the edge hollowing on it there are hard sharp pointed edges to this fire is not like that fire is smooth go back and look at all the old Jess Goodwin sculpted stuff or any of the stuff from sort of 10, 15 years ago in fantasy that has flames or energy effects, and immediately you'll see the difference. So, I, I just thought I had to point that out. They've, they don't know how to sculpt fire anymore because they're using computers to do it. All right, so we have uh, the speed racer car here for the orcs. It is so great to see the orcs get some love. I've said it numerous times before. The non-imperial factions, especially the orcs, have miniatures that sometimes date back to the early 90s, such as the orc buggy, um, which was used all throughout Gork and Morka. That thing is still in production, being still sold at full price today. Yeah, that's stupid, right? Those molds have long paid themselves off. So it's great to see them actually bring out some buggies. Thing is, though, it looks like it's part of some lame dumpster game where they go, oh yeah, you know, buy a game which has like, I don't know, Orcs versus Tau. Just uh, two factions I'm pulling from my head. Orcs versus Tau, and it'll have an old unit of shooter boys that everyone's got already, and it'll have a unit of fire warriors that everyone's got already, and it'll put one new unit in on each side. For the Orcs, it'll be this buggy, and then Games Workshop will be like, oh, it's a great bargain, this $170 box, you know. You get mostly units you've already got or units you don't want, but you get this new car in it. And then three months later, they'll release the car on its own. Because that's exactly what they did with every fucking other box set they've made. Whether it was Death Watch releasing Artemis and Eldrad later. Whether it was the Burning of Prospero or Betrayal at Kelth or... Um, the more recent ones like uh, the Armager Warglaves out of Forgebane. They release this shit in a box, they force you to go buy the big box, and then split it. And some people are like, oh, Mecca, it's not fair of you to say that people didn't like Forge Bane, didn't want Forge Bane because they already had the units or didn't want the units. I wanted the units. Yeah, you're great. You're the minority, not the majority. Go fuck yourself. Anyway, great to see. Looks nice. Um, hoping that they aren't dicks about it and they release them straight away in individual boxes so all players can go out and buy them but they won't i think we all know they won't they'll probably release it as part of a boxed game that you have to buy a bunch of other shit with it instead of just the buggy on its own i know i'm a fucking debbie downer all right what else have we got some uh nurgle blood bowl team that's great because i've been converting up my own um, 
I haven't played any games of the new Blood Bowl. I'll be brutally honest. I painted it pretty much all up, and I've just sat on it because there aren't enough people playing it in my area. That's the one downside with specialist games, especially Titanicus. That game is so ludicrously expensive, like the markups on that in Australia. Everyone at the moment's like, it's not too bad of value in the UK compared to other Games Workshop products. Little exclamation mark, um, a little asterisk. But everyone in the world is in agreement. Australia's getting fucked. New Zealand's getting fucked. Even America is kind of getting fucked with the prices on Titanicus. Part of the problem with it is, is it's selling. It's selling just fine because people are chums. People people just need to have things. They're not got enough testicular fortitude to turn around and say, you know what, I'm going to make a stand and not buy this product to show Games Workshop what they're doing is wrong. We're going to boycott them. People, people aren't strong enough mentally to boycott them. Or they just don't see it as a problem. And if they don't see it as a problem, that's fine. But the thing is, You've encouraged their actions. They've just sold a box with half a dozen miniatures in it for five hundred dollars Australian. Well, not five hundred, four hundred. And um, wow, <laughs> just wow. Talk about encouraging them. And the thing is, though, people go out and they buy these box games, and then they got no one to play against. It's all right if you live in a big city. Uh, you have a games club up the road or a games workshop or something down the road. Me, I live in a country town an hour and a half from a games workshop. I know a lot of people in the same boat as me. Some people go out and buy these specialist games and they do have a games workshop nearby. And they go in to play it and you know what they're told? No, you can't play that here. And they can't play their Blood Bowl. Maybe they can't play their Necromunda. Or they can't play their uh, Titanicus in a Games Workshop. And a lot of people listening right now are probably going, that's silly, Maka, that's not true, that doesn't happen. Games Workshop sells it in their stores, they sell it on their website. Well, unfortunately, it does happen. Um, 30k is really on the outs with Games Workshop stores. A lot of Games Workshop stores won't let you play 30k in there. Thing is, it's up to the individual store managers to decide. It's up to them to even decide if they'll let Forge World Miniatures into Armies on Parade. This company has no set standard across their different stores, which is a real shame. Because people go out, they buy this game, they think, fuck, I'm going to go into my games workshop, I'm going to have a great time, I'm going to play this game with people. And then they get in there and they find out, no, they can't in fact play that game in that games workshop with other people. And that's really disheartening for them. And I think that's a real big shame. It's, you know, not something that they write on the side of the box. Interesting thing I do want to point out. Um, hmm. What's the nicest way of doing this, I wonder? There's a company. A company called Panda Game Manufacturing. This company's based in China. Well, actually, they're Chinese Canadians. And they do all their manufacturing in China. Seem like a decent bunch of people, too. Interesting little website they've got. Why am I showing them? What does Panda Game Manufacturing have to do with anything? This, ladies and gentlemen, this is the company that's producing Titanicus, Kill Teams, Games Workshop's Terrain, Shadow Wars Armageddon. When your boxes say made in China, that doesn't mean the box was made in China. That means the majority of the contents were made in China. Panda Game Manufacturing is the company behind Games Workshop building these boxed games that sell for so ludicrously expensive prices. Manufactured in the UK, right? Sold to places like Australia and New Zealand on the back of, oh, shipping costs are expensive from Nottingham to Australia, when really the products are made right next door in good old China and shipped to Australia and New Zealand for very cheap because they're right next door. Meanwhile, they go all the way around the globe to the UK and they're sold for cheaper. Games Workshop, please use the lube when you're fucking me. All right, let's go on. Sisters of Battle are coming. We do know that, 2019. All right, 
interesting thing to note. All these pictures you're seeing right now are 3D renders. Why is this important? Because, as said earlier, all of Games Workshop's rendering right now is being done in computers. They're designing their miniatures in computers. These are plug and play assets like blocks of Lego. They design a model very quickly. They can do it in a matter of minutes if they so desire. The time spent developing, researching, and creating the wonderful miniatures at Games Workshop has been cut right down by using this plug and play process. You literally only have to create the first sister and then tweak details here and there to do the rest. All the hard work is done in the first one. And the beauty of having a bolt gun is all you have to do is scale it down, oh, let's scale it to 80% of a regular bolt gun. And then slap a fleur de lis symbol on the side of the bolt gun. Ta da! You've got your sister's bolt gun. Essentially, that's the process. So, a whole range of parts are already visible to you right here in glorious old CAD. Drawn in a computer. It's marvellous to see the creative process, isn't it? Anyway, if today's episode is coming across as very salty, it's because I'm a very salty person. I come from the business world. I work in factories, I sell steel, I... You know, I'm used to this no bullshit approach where I want to sell something to a customer, the customer is going to turn around and say the price is good, the price is bad. If the price is bad, the customer goes elsewhere. Nobody's ballsy enough to do this with Games Workshop. Nobody's willing to turn around and say the price is bad on your products. Instead, people try and justify it to themselves by saying, this is good in comparison to this other Games Workshop product. It's like, no, you shouldn't be doing that. What you need to do is compare Games Workshop products to other companies' products. Look at Gundam kits, the size of them compared to Imperial Knights, all plastic clipped together. Those things are a fuck ton cheaper. You know, like, you're letting Games Workshop get away with murder, people. Why do I always report on Games Workshop if I hate it? Why haven't I left the hobby? Because who is going to inform the consumer? Every other organisation out there, cars for example, people review cars, people review movies, they'll tell you this car is good, this car is bad, this thing has poor engine performance, it struggles to grip going around corners, it's prone to understeer, it's prone to oversteer, the suspension's very spongy, this one has a habit of sliding out when it hits ripples. For some reason though, we can't have this criticism of Games Workshop. There are plenty of videos I've made where I turn around and I've said I love this particular thing Games Workshop's done, because I believe in a fair critique of things. But there are also plenty of videos where I have to turn around and say, this is not fair what Games Workshop has done. And unfortunately that makes up the majority of our videos. Why is this? Because no one else is doing it, at least not on the scale we are. You see, Games Workshop is not a glorious company looking to do right by the customer. Games Workshop is a company trying to make money, and hey, there is nothing wrong with trying to make money, but they don't care how they make the money. There needs to be consumer awareness, advocacy for the consumer. Nobody out there is policing them. They are a small fish in a big pond. When tech giants and fuel companies and pharmaceuticals rip off the consumer, there is mass public outrage, like that Martin Shkreli or whatever his name was. Shrek Kelly, I don't know how to pronounce it, who had a AIDS vaccine, one of several, and he increased the price of the medication by X amount. Well, it wasn't a vaccine, it was a medication to help with the symptoms. Increased it by like 400% overnight. And people were outraged, and all sorts of government bodies stepped in, his company lost a bunch in share prices, that kind of thing. This, on the other hand, Games Workshop, they bring out a product ludicrously overpriced at double prices going into some countries and nobody wants to bat an eye they just want to let them get away with it they want to turn around and say oh maca you shouldn't have a girl games why don't you just leave it if it's such a problem imagine if people had that attitude with everything else in life oh well i went down the supermarket and they sold me rotten food <laughs> we'll just leave it go to another supermarket you'd be pissed off wouldn't you well, same thing with movies, cars, we're allowed to go out there and critique it. This looks good, this looks shit, this works well, this does not. Comes to Games Workshop, people want unending praise of the company. 
Wow, their models are great, the sculpts are fantastic, they're the best in the market. No, they're not. Stop bullshitting yourselves. People, you just want to hear it because it's a confirmation bias. You want to hear people say nice things about Games Workshop because you spent a lot of money on Games Workshop and you want to feel that your investment was worth it. And you start to feel bad about yourself when you find out that, oh, no, actually, maybe Games Workshop aren't that great a company. And people turn around and they go, oh, no, 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 I've spent so much money on them. Fuck you, Macca, you're wrong. They are a great company. <laughs> well, yeah, they're not. Um, all right. Space Wolves Primara stuff is coming out. I have one big problem with the Space Wolves Primaris. It's got nothing to do with sculpts, anything like that. It's entirely to do with story. What story am I talking about? Remember Warzone Fenris? It only happened a little while back. About six months before uh, 8th edition 40k dropped. So, what, a year and a half ago now? Magnus the Red, Demon Primarch, came back with the Thousand Suns. Attacked the world of Fenris itself. Damaged the world. Irreparably damaged Space Wolf Gene Seed and their recruiting pool. And practically destroyed the Space Wolves force. There's hardly any of them left. They're dying out. Anyway, here's the Primaris reinforcements that have been brought in by Gilliman. And basically, that whole fucking storyline is now rendered mute. Never happened. Basically. What is the outcome of it? Magnus got involved. Shit went down. Space Wolves have come out the other side with new and improved troops. They've got better troops now. Better war gear than they went into the fight with. So, <laughs> it's almost like a retcon. Because essentially, they killed two birds with one stone. They got rid of most of the old Space Wolves. Yeah, you can still buy the models. But now they've got the Primaris in there. And yeah, there's artwork in the book and stuff. And yeah, you can see, you know, Space Wolf Marines. Regular Marines are there in the background. That's great. I don't give a shit. You essentially made it so the whole story you told in that multiple book arc of Warzone Fenris and the Wrath of Magnus doesn't mean jack shit. Isn't that funny to people? The company could just do that to you. Release something, not only render those book's rules redundant within six months by releasing an entire new edition of 40k, but then a year later, they basically make the effects of that book in-universe also redundant. That's, I don't know, I just find that funny. Like, has no one made this connection yet? How stupid that is? It's almost as stupid as making your models in China, telling people you make them all in Nottingham, and then when people question you about it or point out the fact that it's happened, just ignoring them really shows how much you like to treat your customers like shit, doesn't it? Anyway, I'm back with the Outer Circle. This is your salty solo scrub down, and I'll see you all next time.